was formed from sort of the fact that your mates are the people and the people you hang out in college or school or just down the park or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> With the cider. With the cider. Yeah. 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 In the 2020. You know what I mean, though. It's generally sort of groups and mates, whereas with us it was kind of a little bit more disjointed now. But I think it's helped, sort of relationship wise and the music, and just because everyone's so quite different kind of background. You know, the, the mysticism around people in bands has completely disappeared now because you're able to talk to them over the internet like that. And although that's great, the flip side of that is kind of. I like the fact that you didn't, I imagine when you, when you went to see Bowie in the, in the 70s or whatever, it's like, who the hell is that, you know, where you come from? I, I've always been of the opinion that, you know, musicians are essentially no different than anyone else, you know, there's nothing gives you the right to have an ego. Maybe doctors, you know, someone who's just saved a life, you know, I mean, a song is a song, essentially, although it can do a lot of good and it can provide a lot of happiness, it, it's not really something that allows you to think you're any better than that. Kind of the thought of doing some, a record or something like that is quite overawing for a while. But once we'd spoken to him, it kind of all, went, all that went out the window. Really, mm. I guess. I think. I think maybe we went with him because we wanted a producer that was so different to everything that was current. Yeah. We didn't want a spiky, angular sound at all. We wanted something very different to stick our head out of the rest and and, and make a mark with this album. I think. Yeah, we could have done it with a trendy producer, and it would have made our songs sound more like. You know, razor light or whatever. But we don't sound like that. So yeah, it was. We were just trying to be bold, I guess. Yeah. Bold move. Yeah, and we don't look very good in skinny jeans. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite hard to look good in skinny jeans. Well, yeah, you've got to make sure you've got the right physique. <laughs> Not saying I've got a fat ass. <laughs> I wouldn't presume to think like that. So there's one song which you say is about infidelity. I can't remember which one is it. Wax. There's a couple actually, but yeah, wax is the. And um, um, east, west, north, south is also. About infidelity. You exercising some demons, or is no, this no, it was, your... it was not. It was more about other people and them being infidelious. That one, no. <laughs> committing infidelity. I don't know. To me, anyway. So yeah, it was exercising demons in that respect because it was a that's a hard thing for anyone to deal with after a long relationship. And um, you know, it's it's a subject that you get inspired by. Don't you? Yeah, it's a subject that's quite far-reaching. It seems yeah. to happen a lot. I mean, it's sort of, it's, it's something that goes on, you know. It's something worth writing about because there's, it, I think the songs can sort of, for some, for one person it might exercise their demons, for another person it might heal a few wounds. You know what I mean? Or whatever, you know. It's kind of, I found it was a nail in that particular coffin for me. You know? It kind of shut a chapter. That I, I could stop thinking about it then. So, have you had any touring disasters? I heard you had a bit of a close call. Yeah, it was. Um, we played at a, a little. A little festival, and um, we were just sound checking in the afternoon, and uh, there was this just this storm came in from behind, like the, the, the stage, and it blew the back of the stage sort of inwards. And uh, I didn't, didn't. First thing I knew is this huge metal bars came falling down, and um, yeah, it just pushed all the lights over. The whole stage came down basically, and uh, I ended up trapped on the drum kit. I was, I was also humiliatingly covered in a sort of blue tarpaulin as well, with my head sticking out the top. But, you know, I, I don't normally mention that bit, that was quite embarrassing. It looked kind of like a Monopoly piece, you know, it was quite a head and then this big sort of blue cone. Yeah, uh, yeah that gets your adrenaline going, you know. But it, it was very close, if I'd have been leaning, basically, if I'd have been leaning forward maybe an inch, I'd, it would have pushed my head straight into my door. I'm going to go on a mission to make uh, so sort of playing eight. gigs safer. Yeah. Yeah. So, and everyone's mouths were really, like, boring. You know, none, none of this stage garb. Protective way. Protective way.